Hey, this is Professor Triplett, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at curve warp in Maya as a deformer. All right, so uh, we can see we have a curve and we have a mesh, and these are two things that are necessary to uh, go ahead and make a curve deformer or a curve warp. So the way you want to get this to work is select the curve first, and then shift select the mesh, and then come up to deform, and then just hit curve warp. And you'll see it jumps over, uh, the, the mesh will jump onto the actual curve right at the end. And um, if we want to offset this, we can go ahead and go like this and offset it. Um, of course, this can be animated too. Uh, if you wanted to animate something kind of swooping through on a curve, uh, it could be used for that. Uh, for these purposes, we're kind of looking more into modeling at the moment. So um, you can turn up your sampling accuracy or turn it down you can actually watch it'll actually lower your poly count um, and if you want it more accurate just turn it up uh, you can change the length scale like so you could probably drive it even past that if you wanted to and then as you use the offset you can see it, it moves um, based on the new length uh, let's go ahead and turn that back to one uh, and then you can of course see your, your uh, width scale too so you can change that if you like. Let's leave that at one. Oh, what was it before? Two, that's right, it was two. Okay, so let's go ahead and close these. And um, so we also have, this is what we were, we were just looking at. Now we have the curve rotation. So you can actually um, make this thing spin on the curve. So if this wasn't a cylinder and it was something that, you know, looked different as a spin, you can actually, uh, spin it and uh, change that. Twist rotations, you can twist it as well, of course. Um, we even have the ability to um, twist it based on a curve. So let's go ahead and show how this could work. So that's, it's kind of hard to read. Let me show the, um, let's see, we're missing one of these. Let's just go ahead and turn this up, and then maybe we'll see it more. Okay, it's kind of hard to read at the moment. Um, but the mesh is actually, uh, as it goes over the curve, it is twisting, okay? Um, oh, this is the one I was looking for, the scale curve. Okay, so, so this will kind of give a different idea, um, something that you can mess around with. You can actually manipulate how your mesh uh, is scaled based on a curve while it's on a curve. So let's go ahead and just move this. You can see it kind of changes um, still with the curve, but it keeps that that uh, that manipulation. And, it, and if you look at this, um, it basically this profile here matches this profile here. So if I was to pull the one end down, we're actually looking at it this way, I guess. So if I was to pull this one end down, you can see that's going down. And if I was to pull this end down, that's going down. And uh, I would assume we can put in two there if we want. And you can see it's it's actually flattening out. It's going outside of the range. So um, let's see what happens if we. So we can add in, if you click uh, in here on an empty spot where there's no point, you can actually add in points as well. So that's how that works. So just some interesting stuff that you can do with this tool. Um, I imagine uh, something like, like if you were trying to get a certain kind of perfect curvature of like a a leaf on a on a Corinthian pillar or something like that, um, or you know anything that's like that where you need to curve it just a certain way. You can model your mesh flat, and then you can just put it on this, and then and then manipulate it um, and have it bend based on the curve. So it makes your modeling uh, simpler instead of trying to model your your object in an actual curve from the beginning. Um, so. I mentioned that in my in one of my earlier tutorials on nonlinear deformers that 
like I used that when I was modeling a violin. I went ahead and used a, a nonlinear deformers to basically uh, create the curvature on the surface. But I would model the the violin flat first, and then I would curve it afterwards. So this is the same kind of uh, process as you can curve something uh, based on an actual curve that you draw later uh, after you modeled something flat, if you will. So we can see this now, and now you can see the twist and. Um, Reminds me of something out of Dr. Seuss for some reason. Oh, I forgot to show this, the envelope. So if the envelope's not at one, uh, what happens is, is that it's not giving a 100% influence on this curve. So you can see it starts to move off of it. Um, I'm sure there's uh, some people that need that for some reason, but I've never had to use it. So, okay, so that's it for the, uh, the curve warp. And uh, let me just find that right here. All right, thanks for watching.